<sighs> I have way too many ham radio projects that I need to do. Does that sound familiar at all? You're probably like me and you just don't know where to start with any of this stuff. So I've got to make a start. What I want you to do is let me know in the comments what you would like to see me video because I'm going to do a lot of videos on all of these projects that I've got and I'll go through them in a sec. Which ones interest you the most? That's what I want to know. The other thing too is that I have now a mailing list uh, which has a newsletter which I've been developing and that's going to have a lot of updates, a lot of news, some offers, other stuff, information related to the channel. Now if you want to subscribe to that and keep up to date with some of those um, updates in the newsletter, then there is a link in the description below where you can sign up. It's completely free. I bought this radio. This is an FT8900. I wanted one of these for in the shack here so that I could listen to 10, 6, 2 and 70 FM repeaters. And I put the call out and this radio, uh, the guy's like, yep, I've got one for sale. These are hard to get hold of. I've got one in the car. This is my main mobile radio. And I'm surprised actually while I'm thinking about it, Yesu, you've released like three new radios. You released two mono banders and a, and a dual bander. How about let's get a quad bander? Uh, because you can't get this radio anymore and it's awesome. But we need a replacement for it. Anyway, I bought this, it was all good. I tested it on my service monitor and 10 meters was fine, receive, transmit. Two meters was fine, 70 centimeters was fine. Six meters put out 50 watts, but six meters is about 10 dB deaf on this radio. And that's a bit of a pain because I wanted to use this on six meters. So <sighs> I bought it and it's now turned into a project. So I think there's a faulty component in that radio. If you've ever come across that issue, then please let me know. Might make it a little bit easier for me and save me a bit of time. This is a two meter duplexer. This is a VHF uh, duplexer from China. And I'm gonna do a video a little bit more on that later on, but it is an intriguing design. I came across it, I decided to order one and I've got to get to that very, very soon. My next projects that I've got going on here, this is actually a repeater that I am uh, experimenting with. You've seen in some of my previous videos, this little board, this voting board. I wanna put this in this repeater and replace our current repeater system with this line of radios, but it requires a lot of work and I just haven't got to it yet. This is an SDR switch, so sdrswitch.com. This allows you to insert an SDR um, or an LNA and SDR, uh, or a yeah, separate receiver in line with your antenna system. I'll go into more detail in the video, but basically this bypasses, uh, when you transmit, it bypasses those two ports in the middle so that you're not firing power straight into your um, SDR. If you use an SDR, it can be a lot better um, than using a receiver in a radio. You've obviously got a wider reception range and a better receiver. I'm gonna start testing it with my little air spy here, and I'm going to compare this versus the 7610. I've just got that sitting on six meters at the moment, FT8, and I'll be able to have this running on a few different frequencies using SDR consoles. I mean, I'm very excited actually about this one, about using the air spy and the SDR switch, because I think that a lot of people are gonna be surprised at how much better reception you get using an SDR for your receive and then having the ability to be able to use your normal antenna system um, and still use your transceiver for transmitting and just having this secondary receiver being able to receive um, is a big important thing. Noise figure is a big important thing and we'll go into that when I have a look at this um, a little bit later on. This is a CMCC, Common Mode Current Test Rig. I got to build this up. This came from Halibut, Halibut, Halibut Electronics. So you would have seen a couple of my videos on the Nano VNA and testing common mode currents, then uh, and testing the chokes. This rig just makes it a whole heap easier. So I've got to put that together. Oh dear, this is another project. Let's get this out of the way that I need to do. This is a Kenwood. What model was this? TK, I think it's TK619. 
no, TK690H. It's got VHF FM transceiver on it. It's actually not really VHF. This is actually two, uh, this is actually 10 meters. So I need to convert, uh, no, I don't need to convert. It's already done. This will run my 10 meter repeaters transmitter. I think the current transmitter is getting a little bit, a little bit, uh, a little bit dodgy. I sort of built it years ago and it's got some issues. I need to put a fan in this. This thing will do like 100 watts. It's, ma it's massive. This is supposed to be, oh, this is supposed to be a mobile radio. But I was gonna use this for the repeater transmitter. Uh, a VK3 sent this to me, which was very nice. And I need to put some fans in it just to keep it cool and then interface it to the repeater controller. But that's been sitting underneath these boxes for quite some time. It's probably gonna keep sitting there. I had to get a programming cable from AliExpress for it as well. So that's just gonna sit there for a little while. It's uh, another project to add to the list. And I guess it's kind of a project. I've been re-laying out the shack here. So I've got the radios now on the left-hand side and I've just got stuff all over the place at the moment. Oh, there's another project. This is an APRS Digipeter that I've been using and testing on the bench. I've actually got to go and install this at site. It's actually ready to go. And I've also got dishes as well. So I've got three five gig dishes. These are rockets. Um, these were used for point to point links. You can see here there's a box that's mounted on the back behind where the feed is. And I need to get some new boxes for starters. We've got 5.8 gigahertz transverters coming from SG Labs, which we're gonna get on the 5.8 gigahertz band, mount them in the back here, and this will make a good little way of getting on the 5.8 or six centimeter band. The only thing is I don't know how much power these things can handle these, these dishes or the feeds in these dishes. And I wanna put, I found on AliExpress some Chinese amplifiers that'll do up to like, they'll do up to like 100 watts, but there is a 50 watt version. I don't really know how good they are at the moment, but I'm not sure if these dishes or if the feeds can actually handle the power. So we might end up hooking it up to one of these and see if we can melt the feed. Um, and then I've got this big dish. I did a video on this a little while ago. That's my 10 gig project. So that's getting on pretty much uh, every band up to 10 gigahertz, which will be good. Um, oh, I'm not even gonna start on my tower. I really wish I could get this up in the air. Oh, oh, look what arrived today. Look, 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 look. It is the 5.7 gig transverters. These are, I think, the first ones from SG Lab that have come out. We've got these little patch antennas, 5.760 gigahertz patch antennas. I think that's the 10 meg in, and you've got your inputs for your IF and for your transmit and receive in and out, your power, PTT. I'm really excited. I wanna get this on the back of the dish and get on the band. Let me know in the comments below what you want to see, um, what's the most interesting thing to you. Again, my mailing list, check out the newsletter, and I'll upload some videos soon.